because that dude, that Sham Wow dude is fucking famous, man. Yeah, it's probably loaded too. Yeah, <laughs> he's definitely loaded. And you know what he spent that money on? Sham Wows. Shit, Sham Wows and cocaine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was on something. He was on. He was. <laughs> quick message from our sponsor, Bang Energy Drink. The fuel your destiny of energy drinks, and this is Rainbow Unicorn flavored, which is a ridiculous name, but. I mean, he's got to have some sham wows to be able to clean the tables and countertops off after he does his. <laughs> he thing. was high energy, but like oh, strung yeah. out energy. <laughs> yeah, sham wow, woo! <laughs> it's like, dude, it's pretty cool, but you can settle down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. I mean, he got everybody talking. That's true. That's what their point to make was: get everyone noticing. So. I think I've ever seen a sham wow in person. I I have. We have some of my work. Really? Yeah. I, mean, I don't think they're like the sham wow brand, but. They're the same. They're just like an off-brand ShamWow. Okay. So, yeah. Same point, same yeah. point. That's funny. Yeah, Everybody just buys the, the off-brand based on their, yeah. their exact concept. Yeah. My brother, when he was like two, he like got mad at my other brother and like peed in his ear. Okay? <laughs> like I know that's like really weird, but he was like literally two years old, and I think that's how he like decided to like get back at my other brother. Wait, wait. So he was two and peed two in- Two or three. I, something how like old that. was the other brother? Eight nine maybe he was like sitting oh there. the two-year-old peed in the eight-year-old yeah yeah that's actually pretty creative he just like peed on him that's, I, that's like I actually know it, that, i mean it's kind of it creative yeah. as a comeback you know yeah it's like i like he avoided violence like yeah. he, at least he like he he had the ethical understanding to avoid like hey i don't want to hurt him yeah but i just want to ve- make him very uncomfortable yeah but w- i i don't know i don't even know i don't really know how the story went besides that and they're watching space jam at the time but i swear oh he was awake Oh yeah, they were just. He pulled this off while his other brother was awake. They were awake? fighting, and he was standing, like standing next to him, and he just pulled it out and started peeing on him. They were fist fighting or yelling. No, they were just arguing back and forth. They were watching Space Jam. My mom was sitting there, and then my mom was like, "Oh my god!" and like has to pick him up, and he's just like peeing across the living room. And I'm telling you this story, but I wasn't even born yet. I swear I tell it like I was there, but I was in my mom's stomach. You probably just heard it so many times. I've that heard it so many times that I picture it, and I feel like I've been. It's probably just the way the memory works. Yeah, and it's weird. And, like, also, like, okay, so babies don't remember things before the age of three. That's what I heard. There's uh, infantile amnesia, and babies' brains, like, reroute themselves, and you forget most things. And so a lot of times people have memories. Like, they swear they remember something from when they were, like, two. But it'll just be they saw a picture of it, and they fabricated the story into, like, whatever. But I just think it's so interesting because there's so many things that I know that I don't actually remember, but I fabricated it in my head, like, from pictures or from stories I've heard. But it feels like I was there, and I feel like it was my memory. Isn't that weird? I feel like that's the intriguing element of listening to a story. Like, Because, for example, whenever you were telling me that story – I was thinking of the heroic moment when your brother just takes his cock out and <laughs> pees on your other brother. And then what I was imagining, and whether this is falsified or not, uh, what I was imagining is a baby. Like, I, I, I have these these characters pictured in my mind. Yeah. So, I'll, AMK. Would, would your initials be considered an acronym? I guess, because each letter stands for something. Uh, well, an acronym is actually uh, sim- are like words, but they have to. So, you know how, like... You have like MSU, right? Uh huh. That's not actually an acronym. There's a different name for so it. So it has to create its own word. Yeah. So like. Okay, I'm following. Um, and like if if the uh, if the letters were M U S I C music, and they all meant something so like mandated, unoperable. Then that's classified as an acronym. Then that's an acronym. Dude, that's such a little nuance. I never knew that. Yeah. I never knew that. I when I was on bed rest, all my friends had dropped me. Everyone in the public, I hated me, like, wanted me to die. Wanted so you I was to die. Like, I was like, what do I do, you know? And so I just, I I'll tell you myself. what you do. At least now, this is how you make a claim to fame. <laughs> would you like to hear this yes, proposal? I would love to this hear it. This is a business opportunity. Are you okay, ready for it? Let's hear it. Okay, so you got in this big car accident. You broke both hips. Mm-hmm. I didn't know there were two hips. Dislocated. Until now. Dislocated two hips. Yeah. Broke your spine. You got you got metal rods in your spine now, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you become a twerk instructor. A and what? A twerk instructor. <laughs> you learn how to twerk. You do it professionally. Jill. Then you start instructing other girls on how to twerk, there and that's go. like your claim to fame. That's your like success story. Yeah. And it starts off like Look at really me move my back the way that I can. Exactly. Now. <laughs> I got metal rods in here. Yeah. You can do it if I can yeah, do it. Yeah, honestly. So. You uh you start off with like a really dramatic video that um 
Exactly. Yeah. Maybe maybe like the audio of us talking about oh, it right yeah, now in the background. Yeah. Be like, and really I have metal scene. rods in my back. And then you're you're like, I don't know, getting ready for your day in the morning. It's really dramatic. Mm-hmm. Really motivational music is playing. <laughs> and then okay, it, and then like it busts out acting. to like a like an eighties workout theme. And then oh, you start yes. twerking it out. Yes. And the camera's like shifting around like <laughs> Doing three sixties, yeah, <laughs> and you're just getting down, yes, shaking your like, booty. I'd be like one of those, um, like those workout videos, you know, yeah, yeah. like Zumba, you know, exactly. Except twerking. And we'll Do start, those? we'll start like selling DVDs already. together. There we go. And We're then that'll be your catchphrase. Money. Be like, I have metal rods. If I can do it, you can twerk it. <laughs> if I can twerk it, that'll you be can my twerk motto. It. I mean, I might, I might tweak with it a little bit. Uh-huh. A better one, but <laughs> okay, so that'll be my motto for now. Tweak the twerking. Yeah, there we go. I'll tweak <laughs> the twerking. <laughs> but yeah, that's my well. It's story. it's great to go into business with you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Good Thank you. Business with yeah, that. first first official handshake <laughs> yes. right there. It was documented. It's happening. Oh, it started shit, here like, on the pod. I'm locked in. <laughs> You're locked in. Oh no. <laughs> I'm taking this off. This is so hot. I'm sweaty, man. This is like the sweatiest I've ever been on a podcast. Perspiring quite a bit too. Is it just hot in this basement? I'm taking my shirt off for the end of this. Yeah, just take it off, man. <laughs> I'm just take care. it off. Wow, uh, look ridiculous even more now. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, that's everything I have to talk about. Yeah, me too. Should we? Do you? How much beer do you have left in there? Oh, I have a pretty good. I have about half can left. Do you want to chug the rest on this podcast? Here, pull that up closer. I've <laughs> yes. Ugh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I mean, I think the the beauty of the Beatles was that they worked so well in cohesion. They could like uh mold off of each other really well i think that's why they were so good at the time because they had a sort of chemistry that a lot of bands didn't have during that time and there was a lot of solo artists at that time as well so like elvis and like a bunch of solo people were making it big nat king cole bb king things like that um but i feel like the beatles was the first like you know globalization of a band and uh it, that uh, just their whole style of music like really changed and made things a, a lot more uh, advanced. That's a good point, music. man. I didn't really think about it because everybody, everybody else at that time was individual. They were all alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I think it was, I think it was kind of the switching of like the kind of uh, the norm. There were definitely bands during that time, but I don't think there were big bands, and they were all playing the same <coughs> music, and they usually had a frontliner, you know. Okay. Um, so they're all playing the same music, like doo-wops and stuff. And then the Beatles came in, did doo-wops, and they did it probably better than anyone has ever done it. And then they switched music entirely. The Liverpool boys. Yep, the Liverpool legends. The Liverpool FC boys. Have you seen the Liverpool legends out in uh, Branson or whatever? Yeah, yeah. What, they came here? The Liverpool legends. I remember my parents uh, going to see them like, a couple years ago. The oh, real, wow. The I real Beatles, it, yeah. Ooh. Every single one of them. Paul, Ringo, No, George. not the real Beatles. It's like... <laughs> ah, come on, oh. man. I was playing. Nah, you know? Dude, I was totally thinking that you were talking about like a Liverpool Legends like soccer team. No, oh. no, 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 no. That's what I was thinking. I thought that... I'm like, why would they go to Branson? Nah, it was a show places. of like Beatles impersonation, yeah. like cover... Like uh, I saw an advertisement for that whenever I was like, downtown Branson. Absolutely. And, absolutely. You know, like like the full deal, like, and apparently like could sing the songs like, you know, really well. And it was like a thing in Branson, but... Uh, what if I sign someone else's signature? Does Can you it do that? If you if you sign something with your you were like opposite hand, so yeah, like so I'm, I'm a righty, so okay, this, so you're a lefty, and you uh-huh. sign something with your right hand. Uh-huh. Do you think you could like technically get away with saying that it's not a credible yeah, well, signature? I feel like it'd be sloppy enough though. Well, no, because if you're just scribbling, like most signatures are these days. Yeah, right. Just put a K and yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Now you're. But on it was to still something. you. So yeah. that's intent. Yeah. I don't know how that would work. I don't know how that would work either. But they'd have to prove it was you first. Well, I mean, if we're on camera, then there's that. But if it was off camera. Yeah. 
they can't prove it to me. And then you could just right do your normal signature and be like, yeah. that's nothing close to it. Yeah, you can prove that, like, this is my left hand. And I'm I wonder how you tell signature fraud, because I feel like mine is pretty different. Like, it's like, how much effort do I want to give this signature? Yeah. Am I going to, like, actually try, yeah. or am I going to scribble? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's what it comes down I to. I have so. to try. I don't know why, but really? I have to try, and I have to spell out my entire name. I'm it only 23. Look pretty, I've but. already gotten lazy with my signature. <laughs> Already gotten lazy. Well, I'm only 20, so I've got a couple years. You got some lazy. years for like the world to shit on you a little bit. I feel like I've, I'm kind of already there. Mm. I mean, been to the bottom and back. So. You, you're 20. You, you should be dead inside within about two years. Oh, okay. There we go. So Hopefully. now I've got a timeline. Wishful thinking. Okay. Wishful thinking. <laughs> Hopefully it's two years. We'll exactly. see. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Drake line. Are you ready for it? Ready for it. Everybody dies, but not everybody lives. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> I loved it. I hope that hit I home was spot on. right yeah. here. Almost, like, made my eyes water. Like, I... Whew. Oh, phantom Thanks. down. Thanks. I really appreciate that. it. <laughs> there you go. A science experiment, because I would be totally down for that. Oh, my goodness. Where'd you get those? Do you like meth or something? Um, you say meth? Yeah. Did I cook it? Walter White? Yeah, well, I was on just my like... my Walter you White You know, you shit. have those, like, like protection goggles on your face that are like a, for like science experiments and i just uh-huh. don't know what other science experiments you'd be down, doing down here that's a good point what else would i do with my life besides cook math if it's science related yeah <laughs> that's a good point but anyway oh i was gonna tell you that this can you quit pointing at me no it's rude seen. whenever you point there were three fingers pointing back at you i just want you to know that but this thing okay i don't that thing it was started on malcolm in the middle they did it on Malcolm in the Middle. That one episode, and then the and then the the one kid. I think he's in like a wheelchair or something, and he really got him because you know he's always sitting, so it's like always. I don't know, I don't know. And then he like beat the crap out of the other guy. I love that show, but it did start on that. I don't know if it started what? on that, but it was on that. Yeah, I think. That's really surprising. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's we'll interesting. Have to, we'll have to look that up after this to make sure I'm correct. Uh-huh. Otherwise, just completely throw this whole thing out. I wish I had somebody that. that could just, like, hit the computer. Like, yeah. you're just like, yo, pull that up, man. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure, Call like, me. 99% of the things that come out of my lo- my mouth are just, like, slightly wrong. Like, just ever so slightly. Ever I'm, so slightly. Ever so slightly. I'm sure I'm saying things so incorrect. Like, not enough that I'm noticing it, but other people are going to be like, she doesn't know her Malcolm in the Middle. Dumb. You know? That was That'd be really that 70s show. Yeah, well, I know it wasn't that because I'm obsessed with that 70s show. I know it was Malcolm in the Middle, but I don't know if it was exactly that, that thing. But I think Bro, gross. That's crazy. That's crazy. Because that's one of those things in culture that you don't necessarily understand yeah. or know where they came from. But, like, everybody knows what the yeah. fuck that is. Yeah, yeah. At least oh, people absolutely. our age do. Yeah. Yeah, no. I, I don't know. I don't know where the gap was between Malcolm in the Middle doing it and, like, us doing it now. Mm-hmm. But... I don't know how that came in and like how that happened, how that evolved, but it was on there. I don't know what the correlation to today doing it is, but it was there. Yeah. Wow, that's wild. Have you speaking of that? You know Frankie Muniz. Is it the the main actor? Yes. Have like you heard Malcolm of, himself. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard about his like ridiculous memory loss? What? He had like so he he came out and talked about it. I don't remember what happened to him. It might have been like a bunch of bad concussions or some some crazy thing, but he does not remember filming like large portions of Malcolm in the Middle. Like, <laughs> he will say that he was like <gasps> I ha- I do not remember it. I have I what? I watched the episodes and I have no memory of it. It's like a thing he came out on like Twitter or something talking about, but it's like really weird. It's like one of those things that you're like, "What?" So, like you just don't remember any Yeah, it's really weird. I remember uh there was one day back in my sophomore year where this kid just flipped uh, another kid's hat off of his head and they already had a fight planned out like to go to the little league baseball field in our small town and just beat up on each other so we're like dude you going you going to that fight after school hell and yeah so man like, i'll be there dude, yeah i'm racing i'm not even staying for the last bell to ring like, <laughs> i'm just booking it i'm i'm sneaking out i'm getting front row yeah <laughs> and we all ran to our cars afterwards and just saw these two kids wailing on each other, and then one kid goes, "Cops, cops!" There was Were no there one. actually cops? No, we just all went, "Oh no!" <laughs> we just all started running for our cars and just left. There was no cops, <laughs> but like stuff like that over stupid stuff. I mean, that happens in any school, but I just think it's funny that they're like, "Let's go to the little league baseball fields <laughs> to do this. Let's settle this here." It's like, why, guys? Why? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, honestly, the the thought of like holding your anger back, you know, like like. <laughs> Just like waiting, like waiting on anger, and then you like like it manifests itself. Which something you're angry about now, you like hold it up, you just store it inside. You let it just fucking, 
you know, just bounce around, gain energy. Yeah. And then you go to another place like six hours later. Like that. I, I, yeah. That's a weird thought yeah, to no, me. I couldn't like, it would have to be there in the moment. Cause after a few hours, I usually am like, you know, maybe it's not worth it. Maybe it's not worth being mad about. And then you show up to the field and you're like, Hey man, I know everybody he- is here. Like the entire school right now is watching us and everybody's so excited to see us fight. But what about like peace, love and happiness? You know what? What about those qualities? What about those characteristics? <laughs> Where is the love? And then you start playing some Black Eyed Peas, some John Lennon maybe, yeah. and uh, and then everybody kicks your ass because <laughs> yeah. they call you a pussy. They're like, no, we came here for a fight, <laughs> and I'm not leaving. <laughs> that was a good Southern accent. Thanks, man. It's all around my town. <laughs> okay, weird how like a lot of times we're attracted to people that are that can hurt us the most. Yeah, there's like that element of like, I want this to work. I want yeah. this thing to work. I know I've experienced it. I've experienced it. Yeah. No, for sure. I don't know. Love is a pretty crazy thing, man. Or when you think you're in love, at least. Because I've had friends that have dated chicks for their first girlfriends, and it's really it's hurt them in the moment. And now they're like, why was I so upset about that? But I think those first loves are the ones that are some of the hardest to get over. Because you get more realistic. You look yeah. at it more pragmatically as like time goes on. You're like, well, you know, maybe these are just certain emotions. I'm not even fully certain that I like this girl. I also like, I don't know where I'll even be a year from now. I might even stay in the city. Like, you just get, you just get more rational about it. I feel. Yeah, and I feel like with the first, first loves, that's all you've ever known is dating that person. You don't know what dating anybody else really is like, or seriously dating somebody else like that is like. So, you're like, well, if it ends. My life's just over sometimes because you're like, well, that was who I was supposed to be married to. You have all these thoughts that are going into your head. And in the end, it's not it's not the end. But at the time, you're like, oh, man, my life's over. I should just give up. And it's like, nah. It's called one and baby. Yep. <laughs> one and <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I, I think the concept of a soulmate is bullshit. I think it's bullshit. Yeah. No, because, I mean, you can fall in love. And or at least think you're in love, but that's just not a person that you need to be with, you know. And there's think about how many people you can fall in love with too. Oh yeah. Like there's there's no way that one girl is like destined for you. I mean, I think it's just like some people are more compatible, and then the people that you happen to find that you can actually make it work with, and that's a beautiful thing. I'm not bashing on that. Like if you can if you can make monogamy work for like 50 years, like some people have, that's crazy. And yeah. kudos to you. I tip my hat to you. That's awesome. But uh, the idea that that person was made for you and they're the only one for you, you maybe could have made that work with like, I don't know, like 10,000 females walking this planet. I mean, it would have been a different relationship dynamic and you would have had a different connection, maybe like different things about them. But like, I feel like you learn to love a lot of people. Yeah. The thought that there's only one person out for you or out there for you is kind of ridiculous. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I was doing that. Well, when I looked up, there was a guardrail in front of me, and I was like, well, shoot, what do I do? Like, you're heading straight onto the guardrail? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, like, I have two seconds to decide what I'm going to do. Am I going to go straight? Am I going to go right? Or am I going to go left? And literally, it felt like it was, like, a five-minute conversation in my head, but it was seriously, like, two minutes or two it's seconds. It's absolutely incredible how quick your mind works in those, yeah. like, dire in an moments. Instant. Yeah. yeah. Whenever you, like, you look up. One, you have to process that you're in danger, and then your mind just, like, mm-hmm. shoots Channels on. Channels into some other, like, form of thinking. Yeah, honestly. right? Yeah. So Survival. Seriously, that's exactly what it was. Wait, so what's on your right, what's on your, what's okay. straight, and what's so left? So, on my left side, there was another car, and it was, like, slightly a little bit higher than me, but if I were to swerve, I'd head straight into it, probably. Okay, absolutely. That was, like, in my mind, going I would 90 head into them. Mm-hmm, plus, going 90. Plus the momentum of exactly. them going 50, what 60, knows, whatever. Who knows if they have a child in the backseat, um, where they're heading. You Are know, you I thinking about all them. this in that split oh, yeah. second? Oh, yeah, in those two seconds. Like, I'm like, what if they have a child in the backseat? seat like there might be a cliff on that side you can't really see anything because there's guardrails so I was like there might be a cliff on that side I'm assuming so and I was like well if I go right there's a mountain and I'm not injuring anyone else if I'm going into the mountain I could possibly stop myself because I know if I break I'm still gonna go straight into this guardrail and I know it's gonna like impale my car and it's like the most noble two seconds (laughs) Of human <laughs> existence. You. I've never. Well, wow, it's crazy. <laughs> well, thank you. I I'll drive that. off this cliff so I don't hurt the person. Well, I didn't it, know it was a cliff, but oh, okay. but yeah, I would rather take that chance than run into someone else and drive them off a cliff. So you intentionally drove off the road. 
Yeah. Okay, absolutely. Well, yeah, I, like, swerved my car into the mountain because Scoop. I decided I could go uphill a little bit, stop myself, and then I could get back on the road, drive back around, reverse, whatnot, you know. So I decided to go into the mountain and not thinking that there's a guardrail for the reason. Um, I hit a little, a little divot. And my car caught onto it just perfectly. When I tried to correct, it flipped my car up, and I went on two wheels, and I cartwheeled all the way down. I don't know how long I was spinning for. Oh, wow. But I, my seatbelt was on me, and it completely, like, ripped off of me. Like, the thing, I don't know what it's called, but that holds the seatbelt was yeah. completely, like, ripped out and shredded. And because of the impact, I had, like, gash wounds across my body from it. Yeah, it was crazy. But so I woke up, I got knocked out. I remember rolling and losing control of the wheel. And I was just like, you know what? There's nothing I can do at this point. So I just covered my head because I was like, my head and my heart are like the most important things in my body. Right. And so Mm -hmm. I just covered my head. And then I remember my water bottle and my shoes were the only thing that I kept in my car because I kept it very clean. That was my baby. I had it paid off for like three weeks. I had my car paid off for three weeks and it was my first car. I bought it myself. Uh. I had a really good friend that owned a dealership and he helped me out with a really awesome deal. It's like, got to get my first car. Anyways, I'm still salty about it. (laughs) But yeah, so. Three weeks later, you crash it. mm -hmm. Totally. Yep. Uh. Three weeks after paying it all off and 